Sunday, April 12, 1981. Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The Space Shuttle. 14 stories high, 2,000 tons, poised on the pad for its maiden flight. This is Columbia, the spaceship that will orbit the Earth. Its external tank, it holds over 500,000 gallons of fuel for Columbia's three main engines. And the solid rocket boosters, the largest ever used on any launch vehicle and the first to be employed in a U.S. manned flight. At liftoff, the solid rocket boosters, together with the three main engines, will unleash more than six and a half million pounds of thrust needed to launch the world's first reusable spacecraft. Never before has a winged vehicle been launched like a rocket, orbited the Earth, returned through frictional heating in excess of 2,500 degrees, and landed. Still aerodynamically sound, to be launched again and again. If it succeeds, the space shuttle will truly be a remarkable flying machine. There are many other goals to be reached during the 54 and a half hour mission that lies ahead. 144 test objectives are planned for the flight. These objectives could not be achieved without an astronaut crew. The commander, John Young. The pilot, Robert Crippen. Young has already been in space four times for a total of 533 hours. He is the most experienced astronaut flying today. Although Crippen has over 4,000 hours of jet aircraft flying time, this will be his first time in space. The astronauts make their way across the access arm toward the shuttle in the pre-dawn hours before launch. An American spaceship has never carried a human crew on its maiden voyage. At the launch control center, three miles from the pad, final steps are being completed in the countdown. Final preparations are also being made in the mission control center in Houston, where control of the flight will switch once the shuttle clears the tower. There has not been a manned launch from Kennedy Space Center since the Apollo Soyuz test project in July of 1975. With this launch, Young and Crippen, launch controllers at the Cape, and flight controllers in Houston will experience the most dynamic, fast-paced series of launch events ever undertaken in the space program, all in less than nine minutes. The most challenging ascent profile ever to be flown by a space vehicle. Photographers, film and television crews, plus newspaper and magazine writers from around the world Nearly 2,700 of them are here to cover the launch. In addition, approximately 600,000 spectators line the coastal area near the Kennedy Space Center. Arriving by every mode of transportation, they have come from every state in the Union and many foreign countries. The promise of a rebirth in America's manned space program and the dawn of a new era in space transportation awaits. 14, 13, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start.
Roger roll. The roll will put the shuttle on its precise heading toward an imaginary target in space. Roll program complete. Roger roll complete. Booster, go. GNC, go. Eagle, go. Go at 40, Capcom. Columbia, Houston, you're going at 40. The shuttle is now 40 seconds into flight. Roger, Columbia, on the nice ride. You're lofting a little bit. Uh, you'll probably be slightly high at staging. Negative seats. Columbia, you're negative seats. Should anything go wrong, the shuttle is now too high for the astronauts to use their ejection seats. Roger, you're going for SRB step. We see SRB step flight. Roger on a step. 103 converge flight. Yeah. Capcom, let's tell them all the calls are going to be a tad early because of the hot first stage. Columbia, you're looking a little hot. All your calls will be a little early. Okay. Okay, yeah, that looks good here. Stand by, press to Miko. Columbia, stand by, press to Miko. Mark it. Mark. Press for Miko. Roger, press for Miko. The shuttle can now continue toward Miko. Main engine cutoff. They like the VAP, Eagle. Ecom. Let's go, flight. Capcom, VAPS, go. Stand by, negative return. Columbia, stand by for negative return. Mark it. Mark. Negative return. And your VAP is good. Outstanding. Sure is. We can confirm it. Oh, front of you. Front of you. And single engine rota flight. And Columbia, your single engine rota. Columbia can land safely at the Naval Air Station in Rota, Spain, even if two of the three main engines should fail. Right now, the engines are generating over 42 million horsepower. Miko, 25, Miko. Zero, up at Roger, Miko. Man, we got Miko confirmed. Miko, Roger, Columbia, Miko. Right on the money, nominal. Main engine cutoff. Columbia is now in space, traveling over 18,000 miles per hour. Okay, we got set. Roger, we confirm the set, Columbia. The external tank has just been jettisoned and is now falling away from the shuttle back toward Earth. The tank will break up as planned over the Indian Ocean when it comes into contact with the atmosphere. Shortly, by firing the ohms, orbital maneuvering system engines, Columbia will achieve orbit. Then one of the most important tests of the mission will be attempted, opening the payload bay doors. The doors must be opened before the end of the sixth orbit to expose the space radiator cooling system. If the radiators cannot be exposed, heat collected from the onboard electronics cannot be released and the astronauts will have to return home. The Ohm's burns are successful. Columbia is now in orbit, circling the Earth at an altitude of approximately 150 miles. The payload bay doors will now be opened. Okay, the port door is coming open now. Roger, copy. Well, you are missing one fantastic sight. Boy, that is really beautiful out there. Uh, we appreciate those updates. Both doors have been opened. The radiators can be deployed to begin dissipating the heat. The doors are all opened up and uh, hunky dory. Glad to deploy it right on time. And the radiators look good. 
Okay, we uh, we want to show you our own spot here. We do have a uh, a few tiles missing off of uh, of both of them, uh, off of the uh, starboard pod three uh, tile and some smaller pieces, and off the port pod uh, looks like. I see one full square and uh, looks like a few little triangular shapes that are missing and uh, we're uh, trying to put that on TV right now. Roger, Grip, we can see that good. Uh, from what we can see of both wings, uh, tops and uh, leading edges, though, there's, uh, all those are fully intact. Within minutes, an assessment is completed on the impact these missing tiles could have on the remainder of the mission. At a news conference later in the day, Flight Director Neil Hutchison answers questions from reporters. Well, you asked me if I knew where there were any other tiles that might be loose. The answer is no. Uh, and quite frankly, we're not worried about any other tiles being loose. At this writing, is there anything Anything at all that would lead you to say you might not go for a full duration mission? Nothing. Columbia, Houston, uh, you guys did so good, we're going to let you stay up there for a couple of days. Your go for on orbit. Spacecraft let's go for on orbit. This thing is just performing just outstanding. Roger, we agree with that. And Columbia, Houston, uh, just for your information, uh, you dropped those SRBs right on target, and uh, they were floating just the way they ought to be, and uh, the boats were getting ready to fish them and bring them back. Okay. The uh, ride that they gave us was uh, pretty neat. The solid rocket boosters, which separated from the Columbia as planned, two minutes, 11 seconds into the flight, landed on target in the Atlantic Ocean, 151 miles downrange from the launch site. After being towed back to Kennedy Space Center, both boosters will be refurbished and used again in a future shuttle flight. The third and fourth Ohms burns are also successful, raising Columbia's orbit to an altitude of approximately 172 miles. For the first television transmission from inside the spacecraft, the crew will give a status report on the mission. The flight so far has gone uh uh, as smooth as it could possibly go, we've uh, done uh, every uh, test that we're supposed to do, and we're up on the timeline, and the vehicle has just been performing, uh, performing beautifully, much better than anyone ever expected uh, to do on a first flight, and uh, no systems are out of shape, and uh, it's delightful up here in zero gravity, my dad. Of course, we owe this to a lot of people, and we certainly want to thank everyone who has helped get this thing airborne, and uh, Take great pride, it's doing so well right now. Okay, we're switching over to uh, to the app camera here. Yeah, I'd like to echo John's words as I usually do. I guess uh, being the so-called rookie on this flight, I had a, a thrill from, from the moment of liftoff all the way up to what we're doing now. It would really been super. The spacecraft has worked as advertised all the way along. I think we've got something that's really going to mean something to the country and the world. This vehicle is uh, performing like a champ, like all of us that have worked so long on it, knew, knew that you would. Okay, sir, we appreciate those comments. I guess that does it. That was a good time, and I think you must have practiced. We're just about to lose your ghost song. Just accident. Just accident, says Robert Griffin. None of the other events of the day have been accidental. Every test, liftoff, SRB separation and recovery, ET separation and impact, four ohms burns, payload bay door latch opening and closing tests, radiator latch deploy and stowing tests have all been successful. I guess we owe you guys one super attaboy for today. I, this is fantastic. You worked through a pretty long, hard day, and you're essentially right on schedule, which I, is going to be close to being a first sort of space flight biz, I think, for a first day activity. It's your